Hi, and welcome to the five minute check in. So today we're going to revisit the winter virus because we're in the thick of winter now and we want to double check. And to help us with this, we have the one and only Dr. Renuga Vivekanandan, who is the chief of infectious diseases at Creighton University and also a full professor at Creighton. So Renuga, thanks for joining us again. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Good. So let's jump back in here and take a new visit on winter viruses. So we'll look first at the ILINET, which is a uh, it's just a, it's a graphic of the utilization of patients with viruses, both inpatient and outpatient. It's a mix of the two. So when we take a look at this this graphic, what do you what do you see here, Doctor? Yeah, so definitely you could see that all the viruses are trending up, RSV, COVID, influenza overall. We are seeing an uptick of all the viruses. And as you know, Dr. McGinn, it's pretty um, typical for this time of the year. Um, so definitely that's what we're seeing. So nothing unusual. I think in the years prior, we were seeing some new RSV big bumps and obviously COVID bumps, but now it looks like the viral load is in the community about where one might expect it to be. So. So that's good news. And let's take a look at the COVID uh, map here, particularly the admissions. What are we seeing uh, across the community now? Yeah, thankfully, if you look at the COVID-19 map, um, the hospitalizations are, and overall activity is much lower than the last couple of years, so which is very good news. So I hope that trend continues to be that way. And we were talking about the use of antivirals in this case. Do you are you any news on that? I think you know maybe there without all the attention on this, people are doing less and less in that space. Is that accurate or? Yeah, personally, you know, I'm seeing less and less antivirals still being used. And I think uh, you know, on top of vaccination, you have Paxlovid in the outpatient setting, Paxlovid or Remdesivir in the inpatient setting. So we should definitely be using those because they can reduce hospitalization and mortality. So definitely encourage using antiviral for COVID nineteen. Yeah, particularly in the, the more vulnerable older patients, right, to that yeah. extent. So, yeah. And let's take a look at the the heat map for influenza. Um, and I know we can see in some of our regions like Texas and the Southeast, we're seeing a, a real red part of the map here. Uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, you're definitely seeing on the Southeast, a little bit on the California area as well. But um, usually, you know, it starts here, but it's start, you know, extending to spreading all over. Um, and also, if you look at the influenza map too, um, our peak last year was much earlier, but thankfully mm. we're just peaking now. So I, I expect us to peak end of December, early January. But the good news from that is you could still get vaccinated. So if you have Absolutely. not gotten vaccinated, it's a perfect time to go get vaccinated for influenza. Right. And I think that's a theme for us here, right? So let's all, everyone, it's not too late to get vaccinated. One of the main reasons we're here today is to really encourage our providers to continue to offer vaccinations. So, and if we look at this map on the trend of the type of influenza, it looks like it's predominantly uh, type A influenza. Is that right? Yeah, like we talked about last um, time, uh, definitely that's what we saw in Australia. Now we're seeing similar picture here too. It's type A, a lot of H1N1 as well. So influenza vaccine works great. And also don't forget Tamiflu for those high risk folks. Great. Uh, real quick, a lot of news and mention in the media today about white lung pneumonia. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about what that is and, and you know, should we be concerned? Should we not be concerned? Yeah, just looking at the data, there was a recent outbreak of mycoplasma pneumonia in Ohio and kids. So basically, you know, during the winter time, you see also bacterial pneumonia as well. Thankfully, we have great antibiotics that works for that. So if you're not feeling well, seeing your primary care provider is important, but it's something bacteria that we have known for a long time. It's not novel. So I think that's important to remember. Right. So this is something we all, you know, familiar with the super infection or just a primary infection with the bacteria. So in this time of the, of the season. I do want to tell you one more thing, though, um, especially after influenza, if you de develop bacterial pneumonia, it's really important to remember for um, patients that are at high risk for MRSA and MSSA pneumonia. So making sure we cover our patients appropriately as well. Right. Well, let's close out with a discussion around RSV. That took a lot of attention last year. It was an early peak. It drove the numbers really high. And we also had a lot of new vaccines in this space, which is exciting. Um, so any comments on our vaccination rates on, on RSV and any thoughts? 
Yeah, we have a lot of opportunity for RSV vaccine. It's exciting new development, about 14, 15% overall uptake. So we really have to educate our patients and offer this for 60 and older and our third trimester pregnant females. So we have opportunity, again, the same theme, getting vaccinated. And unlike last year, it's just starting to trend up. So we still have time to get the vaccination. So we're still okay to be encouraging our patients to get vaccinated for influenza, still for RSV. It's not too late. Seasons are just really starting to peak. So let's really get the word out on that. All right. Last but not least, what else could we be doing and telling our patients to be careful about during this, this viral season? You know, I always think about uh, hello, human kindness, what we talk about in Common Spirit Health. It's really important, you know, to wear a mask around people who are vulnerable, patients who are vulnerable. If I'm ill, I should stay home and get better. Then, of course, hand hygiene is very, very important. Good. So back to the basics. Let's not forget that. And it's, it is human kindness. When you're visiting an old grandparent or someone who's vulnerable in a nursing home, really go out of your way to wear a mask and be careful in that case. So as always, great to talk with you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks for joining me. And I'll see you all in two weeks at the next 5-Minute Check-In.